there. And that's how I got on Walker, Texas Ranger, was just doing background work. Um, were you only were you only 16, 17, maybe 18 at the time? Were you very young? I, you're very kind. I'm 52 years old right now. So back then I was in my 20s. Okay. Um, you know, so it it was right in the beginning of my acting career. And I thought, oh, I'm going to go from modeling into acting. And this was a great way to get my feet wet. And it was the best show I could have ever been involved in because that particular episode that we're talking about was the first one where I was a secretary. And, you know, my casting agent sends me there and, you know, it was a great learning experience being on that set, but I fell in love with being on a TV show and it really got me interested. And I developed great relationships with everyone on the show, the casting directors. They actually had me back for multiple episodes. Um, so I was in many more episodes than just the secretary. Uh, they had me coming back as an extra in background work, dressed in different costumes, whatever it was. So I was in quite a few episodes, but that's the one that I was credited for. Um, one of your previous guests, the first guest, which was Andrew. Yes. Um, so I was, yes, yes, I was in the same episode and I remember him being like this mob boss and yeah. they used my leg because I had a sexy leg back then getting out of a limousine. So in the beginning where they show us showing up at his mansion, he's having this party. There's this leg that gets out of the limo. They did show me a little bit and then I'm a party goer, you know, one of the, yeah. the people there. So I, I was actually in quite a few different, um, never landed a speaking role, but that's okay. Cause I did later, uh, in my career. Um, but it really it exposed me to being on a TV series and I have some great memories that I'll share about Chuck too. Yeah. And I suppose, Lisa, you mentioned that, obviously. That must be a nervous excitement when you find out you're going to be, when it's revealed to you that you're going to be an extra on Walker, Texas Ranger. So you're coming to the set, you're probably thinking, I got to meet Chuck Norris. I probably got to get my autograph for a brother or a father or something that wants to autograph that phone. Maybe at that time, there was no probably mobile phone. So it was all cameras and sort of stuff like that. So you're probably thinking to yourself, I need to get a picture on the camera or something so I have some sort of memories that uh, I can start to remember because I mightn't be back here again let alone you didn't you you couldn't have foretold that you've been brought back so one of those experiences you're thinking to yourself I'm going to soak it in so was it all was it almost like you were trying to stay on set and be around the place even when you weren't involved to watch everything that was going on to watch all the stunts all the fight scenes and just like a sponge I say soak it all in I imagine you nailed it. You you said it perfectly. Um, and back then we did not have cell phones. So I have a Polaroid of myself and Chuck and I'll have to dig it up and send it to you. I'll find it somewhere. I know I have it. Um, but yeah, it was very different back then. And you you said it exactly. I couldn't get enough of seeing how it worked behind the scenes. I was a sponge and it taught me so much and they kept inviting me back over and over again because I was one of the hardest working extras and, and background actors. Um, and I always encourage this. I actually teach acting classes and I say it to all my students. The first thing you wanna do is be an extra and do some background work. You will learn so much and eventually they upgrade you or give you a line somewhere. And uh, it just really is such a great experience and learning experience. So. I really fell in love with acting because of that show. Um, when I first met Chuck, I was starstruck, of course, yeah. because he's a legend. Everybody knows, you know, and I knew him back. Um, it was uh, The Way of the Dragon, the, yeah. the movie that he was in with Bruce Lee. So I go way back to, you know, knowing who he was. My dad loved Chuck Norris. My brothers, I mean, everyone is like, you're on walk as Ranger. So when I see this guy, I am starstruck and he couldn't have been nicer. He came up to everybody, even the extras. You know, we're just the people in the background, no acting roles. He came up, said hello, introduced himself, was nice to me, to all the others. I've never met an actor who was more gracious and kind to everybody on the set. I, I just really had so much more respect and admiration for him after meeting him. Um, and so I continued to just work really hard and get more roles in the background. And he, Chuck had an assistant. 
who took a liking to me and it was around New Year's Eve. And he said, Hey, do you want to be my date for New Year's Eve? And I said, sure. Well, I didn't know we were going to Chuck's house. So I, this little girl from Indiana, who's, you know, just a background actor on uh, Walker, Texas Ranger, spent New Year's Eve with his assistant, Chuck, his date, and a few other friends. So I was at Chuck Norris's house. We all get in this limousine for New Year's Eve, go to this great party. It was the most wonderful time. And again, a gracious host, very kind, fun-loving, outgoing. Um, he's just like salt of the earth. Uh, and I don't know if too many people know his background. You can look him up and figure out, you know, this for yourself. But um, he's a great guy because he's a Christian. So he's got a lot of faith and he was in the Air Force. So this is a guy who's a patriot. He He's a believer. And it's, so that explains like why he was such a great guy. But he just is amazing. And the martial arts that he did throughout his life, you know, taught him so much, I'm sure, too. So I just can't say enough good things about Chuck and my experience with him, meeting him, and just watching him interact with everybody on the set, everyone from the actors to craft services to the crew, um, just amazing. And Lisa, did you get that sense of a family sort of uh, run show? Because obviously his brothers were involved in the show and sort of producing and directing, and there was a whole sense of that sort of family sort of environment that it, it was a Norris sort of production to try and make this a, a success. So obviously Chuck was emotionally attached to this sort of show, given all the family involvement in it, given that this was his sort of uh, joust at the sort of the TV route away from the, the whole movie sort of scenes as well. And do you get the sense that this was a real sort of a family sort of uh, run sort of project and that's what made they were all tied up into it emotionally and physically, the whole Norris family? Yes, it was very family oriented. And his, I got to work with Eric Norris, uh, one of his sons. Uh, he was doing stunt coordinating. We were doing a night shoot and there was this car crash that was taking place. And, you know, not only in his own family, Chuck's family with his sons working on set, but just the whole stunt crew and everyone involved, they made sure safety first, everyone, you know, was taken care of. It was a cold night. It was dark. You know, is everyone fed? Is everyone okay? Not only his own immediate family, but he made everyone on set feel like family and, and part of his family. I never, and still to this day, have never experienced anything like it where you truly feel like you're one big happy family and, and you're taken care of and you're put first. It was incredible. I suppose, Lisa, for every sort of show, obviously the sporting cast uh, play an important role in a sort of success. And we know with Walker, uh, Texas Ranger, we have Walker and then we have his psychic Trevesh, the sort of Batman and duo sort of role. And during your time coming and going from Walker, Texas Ranger, did you go get to know the recently departed Clarence Giller Jr.? And did you have any sort of sequences or memories or did he share any sort of acting advice with you? Yeah, he was amazing. Another just kind, gentle spirit, just very giving. And because I was new in acting, I believe he was teaching acting classes in Dallas at the time. And so I was kind of picking his brain and asking for advice. And, you know, here's this girl, you know, he doesn't know or owe me anything. And he really was kind of coaching me and giving me some pointers on, you know, what to do and, you know, it was really what I was doing. He said, this is the greatest thing you could do is just be right here and learn. And I took that advice. And so I took it, you know, very serious and he couldn't have been nicer and just more helpful to everybody and a phenomenal actor. I mean, he just was, you know, on point every scene, uh, but you know, you got to watch the actors and he nailed it, but yet he had fun in between takes him and Chuck yeah. also and everybody as well. So it was, an honor and a privilege and you know he's no longer with us and it was just amazing that I got to meet him um and experience that time with him uh, I also got to meet uh Cherie Wilson too yeah. oddly enough living in Dallas it's a small world there and a really you know close community I was at a friend's house and sure enough who was over there visiting but Cherie and she was in the other room he was a photographer 
And she was looking at some proofs. And back then we had um, negatives like slides and you would look at them through this little loop. And she was in the other room looking at her proofs and uh, I got to meet her again. And I said, hey, I've, I've been an extra on the set before, you know, you probably don't know me. And she said, so nice to meet you. And we just struck up a conversation and probably visited for about an hour with this photographer. And she also was just one of the most wonderful people there. I never had one experience um, that was negative on that set with any of the actors. And that's really hard to say you know, in any Hollywood movie or TV show that you're working on, especially now. <laughs> and Lisa, obviously, uh, you mentioned about, we all know big cable TV shows, uh, appearances, they open up doors uh, for actors and actresses in terms of what you have on your credits. It's like your CV, your sort of portfolio, the, the bigger the coup and whoever you can sort of list uh, that you have sort of worked with or been on set with or part of production. And obviously it does open up doors. I imagine from what you're saying that being involved in Walker, Texas Ranger and to say that you may have shared a, a, a screen with Chuck Norris and Sherry Wilson, Clarence Giller Jr. I imagine it opened up doors further up the ladder that might not have been open necessarily if you hadn't got your role in Walker, Texas Ranger. Yeah, absolutely. It started to help me build my resume. And when I was able to say I was on Walker, Texas Ranger, that did open the door. Uh, and just from the learning experience, um, you know, and being able to say I was connected with that show, first of all, everyone loved it. And they all asked me, how is Chuck Norris? You got to work with Chuck. And they just were thrilled. So it was also a great you know, conversation piece to open up with uh, other casting directors or people that were producing films because everyone loved Chuck. I mean, they still do. So that was very helpful. And I was only in Dallas for a year because I had an opportunity to work on a project in Los Angeles. And I moved um, pretty quickly from Dallas to LA. And then I lived in LA for 15 years and had a great career there. So really Walker, Texas Ranger is what got me my start. Uh, Cause I went from modeling to TV and commercials and that's, that's the first show I ever had as my credit, so. Yeah. And Lisa, what's the world like today in terms of Lisa Farga? Is it all quiet at the moment, just watching on uh, developments and or are you still are you sort of you mentioned about being teaching acting? Is that maybe taken over? Are you more a teacher now rather than an actor or are you still fairly active in that business? You mentioned sports uh, as well. So are you gone down the more presenting route now these days? No. So actually I started teaching uh, during COVID. So everything was shut down and I thought, you know what, I'm going to offer some acting classes because everything was online and, and remotely. So uh, I had done a few acting workshops prior to that and people loved it. So I did it here in a small town and I called it, you know, I said, I'm bringing Hollywood home. So all these actors in, you know, my little small town of Indiana just learned, um, you know, from someone who had been in Hollywood and they loved it. And it went over well. So I, I did that for fun and as a give back, you know, because I, I would have loved to have somebody do the things and offer the things that I did. So that was my um, my way of giving back to the acting community locally. Um, but currently I am busier than ever. Like I said, I in when I lived in Hollywood, I had a really great career, done lots of film and TV. Uh, but in 2009, my brother is a two-time cancer survivor. He's doing great today. But I gave up my career and left Hollywood to be back home and help take care of my family. While at home, I said, all right, I can't be out of the business. So I started my own production company. And I got into producing, writing, and creating my own projects and my own films all independently. Uh, and it's going great so far. I've got three different series that I created, wrote, and produced uh, and we're getting funding for all of those right now. Um, there's also a feature film that we're going to be uh, shooting in 2024 next spring. Uh, and that one I co-executive produced, co-wrote, and I have the starring role in that. So there's a lot going on in Lisa world. And uh, I, I guess I owe it all to Walker, Texas Ranger and my experience with that because it really helped me grow and get excited about this whole industry that I didn't know much about. So yeah, it's very successful today, very busy today. Um, I host a lot of shows. 
Uh, I am a spokesperson, a consultant for lots of different companies and brands. So I have my hand on a lot of different things, but just absolutely love, love it all. Yeah. So the hands are deep in the cookie jar as the saying goes. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> uh, Lisa, I suppose for the final 30 seconds, if we could start to wrap it up in terms of sharing your memories. If you could summarize your experience on Walker, Texas Ranger, uh, appearing on the episode of Shadow in the Night, season one, episode three, and the numerous sort of roles that you came coming back further and further uh, throughout the series in Walker, Texas Ranger. If you could summarize your experience in two sentences. What would you like those two sentences to read? An opportunity of a lifetime and an experience I will never forget. Okay, on that note, Lisa Farga, thanks for sharing your experiences of all your guest roles and your appearances on Walker, uh, Texas Ranger, and this week called Classic uh, Series. And we'll, all that's left to do is for me, Jim Conlon, to say to you, Lisa Farga, stay safe, take care, and God bless. Thank you. You. Take care, Lisa. Bye. Bye.